Uh, joining us now, and I'm so glad he's willing to come on, is our buddy uh, Terry Collins, former manager, of course, of the New York Mets, and now a very good analyst on SNY and beyond. Terry, longtime pal, Craig Carton, Evan Roberts, how you been? Good. I'm doing good, Craig. How are you? Guys, good to talk to you. It's yeah. been a while since I've heard from you. Yeah, so. it's been a long time. That's uh, that's uh, my fault. No one else's, but I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> that's just kidding. You know, I said to Evan in regards to, well, I got a couple things on Matt Harvey. Uh, let, me, let me start this over. I said to Evan that in the position you're in, as much as you want to be there and help your guys out, because they're your guys, they're like your kids in a way. That's correct. You almost don't want to know. So how did you navigate the rumors you were hearing versus actually confronting Matt back in those days? Well, Craig, you know, you got to understand, you just, you know, you, you can't accuse him of anything because, you know, there was, we, you know, back then there was no testing. There was only testing for the steroids and the amphetamines. And, but, you know, with the rumors and, and obviously some of the things we saw, you know, I talked to Matt about, you know, making sure everything was okay to try to get some help. If he needed help, we were all there for him. We're all in, you know, I, I wanted the best for him. I, as you said, these guys are like my kids. And I, you know, Matt Harvey, I met him the day he signed, um, loved him and, you know, saw the struggles, uh, some of the depression that he went through at times, um, certainly, but to, to hear the testimony today, I'm a little little shocked about it, a little surprised, but I'm not. I, I shouldn't say I'm surprised. I was a little upset about it, but I'm not surprised did, because those are the things we had heard. So, did you notice, as someone who got to know him, as you mentioned, since the beginning, to his rise to stardom, to the injuries, did you notice a difference in the way he acted and the things he was dealing with from, let's say, his rookie season? to missing a year from Tommy John to the comeback. Was there a noticeable difference from him? Well, there was at times because of, you know, after, after he became certainly this megastar, you know, he, he kind of, he was, when he was a rookie, nobody came to the big leagues and acted like they're supposed to be better than Matt Harvey. Nobody. The guys all loved him. They all accepted him. And then he became the toast of the town and, once in a while, you saw some issues. I mean, like the missing of the games. He was late to the park a couple of times. And, you know, stuff you deal with in-house, you know, the fines and all those the other things that go with it. But, you know, you – and, again, you heard the, heard the players talk. But, you know, they talk about they talk about anything at times. So you, – but you just really couldn't call, sit them down and say – and you know, except for saying, "Hey, Matt, if you need help, you got to you, you know you got to tell us." So cause we'll we'll get you some help. When the players talked, did they talk about him in kind of a, an angry way or a sympathetic way? You know, I think in the beginning it was sympathetic, and then after though, um, after the you know, I, I've always thought this: there's only so many times you can say I'm sorry right. before all of a sudden that doesn't work anymore. And I think that is what's what happened to Matt's case where, you know, he was late for a game. He was, you know, he missed a game and then he was late for a game and then he missed a game. And Hey, I want to talk to the team. I need to address the team. And so, and all of a sudden they, they said, we don't want to hear it anymore. You know, it's, we don't want to hear where you're, you're sorry. We want to hear hey, we're, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have to say this again. I'm going to, I'm going to be the good teammate that I was and show up and play and show up and pitch. So we don't want to hear any more of the excuses and things. Yeah, there's that so, urban legend story that you guys were in Chicago late in a season and Matt wanted to take the, like, uh, the guys out for dinner and nobody wanted to go out with them. Like, he'd have gotten that bad. I don't know about that. I do not okay. know about that. Yeah, that, again, it's an urban I legend. Uh, it's um, But I will tell you this. I yeah. will tell you this. When they were when he was a rookie, every time those the big boys went out to dinner they took matt harvey with them you know what is weird about it, terry it just my my sense on it and then i'll tell you that my personal connection to matt here in a second is that matt bought in to the papers and, and the dark night stuff and you know obviously you're the the famous models and going to nick games and all that stuff and he embraced new york in a manner in which a lot of young immature guys can't successfully do and there did come a point where some of the veterans resented that, where he kind of viewed himself as bigger than the team. Did you feel that? Well, I, I think that was a that was a thought process by some. But let me tell you something. We, I, I mean, I, I know David probably won't answer the phone, but 
you know, you need to talk to David Wright about that. So David dealt with that. I called David in one night, and he did his absolutely the best, gave the best presentation you could possibly give to a young player. Hmm. You know, David said, hey, I was 21 in New York, too, and I'm a pretty good-looking guy myself. You know, all the, all the things. But, you know, and, and you know, they, we brought up, you know, and, and I, they, Matt was told all about this stuff. David said, you got to stay off page six. You got to stay off it. Right. You know, Derek's not on page six. I'm not on page six. And so once in a while, though, you know, you, you got to let them look in the mirror. You know, you can you can say so much and then all of a sudden it becomes there's accountability. We talk about it all the time. You know, hey, you got to be accountable for your actions. And, you know, and Matt, as we've seen in the last couple of years, has finally said, you know, hey, look, I messed up some things in New York. So. Uh, but I was I was a little surprised today with uh, with what with some of the stuff that got out. And, sure, so. you, you know but, it's it's weird as, as a Met fan. I remember those two starts where he had a bloody nose, and at the time I was like, "Oh, he's so badass! Look at him! He's got a bloody nose. It doesn't even matter. He's dominating the White Sox." When news like this comes out today, it makes you kind of reassess things and say, "Hey, what was that about? Did that thought go through your mind? Did you think back?" to certain things? Maybe it was the bloody nose. Maybe other things, and kind of question what was actually going on. Oh, you know, I not 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 in that particular case. I mean, I go back about some of the things we talked about. I mean, you know, the, when when in, when all when he was coming back and he all of a sudden didn't want to pitch. He wasn't going to pitch the amount of innings we had set right, for him because right. he didn't want to get hurt. And then two weeks later, he came in my office. You know what? Screw that. I'm pitching. That's what I remember. I remember, you know, the look in his face in, in Game Five of the World Series. That look is this is my game. That's what I remember about him. Now, there were some other things that went on, obviously, some things where I saw some depression. I saw some, you know, stuff that made you very, very concerned about his mental health um, that, that popped up that, you know, all, I turned it over to the, the appropriate people and said, hey, look, this guy needs some help. And after that, you know, it's I don't know what I can do. You you know, it sounds like you can do everything, but you know. No, you can't. That, and I can speak yeah. to it from my life experience. You know, the, the, the people like you who want to reach out and get help and, you know, drive a guy towards the professionals who are in a position to help. If that person doesn't want the help, there's nothing you can do, sadly. You know, you you pull them, you could pull them kicking and screaming until, you know, the person's willing to you know own what's going on and be honest about it. You're in a very, very bad spot there. I do wonder this, talking to Terry Collins one of the things he admitted under oath today, not cocaine, but that it was a normal thing for him and other guys to take Percocets or Oxy or some type of uh, narcotic in the dugout and the clubhouse. Now, we all know the stories from the 1980s. There was a uh, you know a basket of greenies, quote-unquote, in every dugout in baseball is the norm. When you look back on your time managing here, do you have a recollection of that being as prevalent as it sounds it was? I am not. I really have not. You know, I testified in front of the uh, Mitchell Commission when they were talking about steroids. Right. You know, they asked me one day, did you ever see anybody inject themselves? Well, of course not. Right. I mean, you know, these guys have ways to do whatever they want to do. So, I mean, I'm sure there were guys drinking during the game at times. You know, I, who knows? You know, I mean, I, we, you, we can't be naive enough to think everybody's a choir boy in that clubhouse. But, uh, you know, I, I again, I, I, told, I teased Matt one day. I said, you know, I need your social security security number Matt said why I said because you've been in my office more than anybody I've ever had and I'm writing you off my taxes this year <laughs> as a dependent so and, and Matt he laughed about it and you know so I'm just I just all I can tell you right now guys is I just hope he's in a good place he's in a better place and you know what and, and his life continues on because I, this is a I'll sad this, better. this is this is going to go down Craig I'm telling you this is going to go down as one of the saddest guys I've because this guy was destined to be a star yeah listen he was going to be the 300 million dollar man he had the goods he had the looks he had the town all that stuff and unfortunately you know injury a big part of that he never got to realize the potential but i look at it a little bit differently terry and i look at it from this standpoint i think he's lucky to be alive today because if he if he takes the you know the same pill that unfortunately tyler skaggs took that was laced with fentanyl Matt Harvey's, you know, we're reading his obituary, possibly. And that that scares me the most because, only because I've lived it with gambling. So I think yeah. I know what I'm talking about in regards to, you know, some of the life decisions that Matt might have made. And I'm very fortunate to have a second chance. Matt's clearly fortunate to have the chances he's had. 
Matt Harvey was this close to being a footnote and being a, a guy we talked about in the past tense. So I hope he realizes that. I hope he's at a stage in his life, maturity-wise, where he owns that. And I hope he becomes a voice to help other guys out in the future because I think he has a powerful story to tell. Well, first of all, Craig, you're absolutely 100% correct in everything you just said. And by the way, it's guys like you that help Matt Harvey get better. It's your help. It's your the taking your time to say, listen, I, I have I ran through some bad times in my life, and you know what? I I, I stood up and be, made a take accountability for him, and look where I am today. I'm 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 back. I'm, yeah. I'm doing fine. And those are the lessons they have to learn, and we can't tell them that. I mean, you know, I you know, I didn't have any of that stuff and cripes when i was in the minor leagues and coming up in you know in baseball yeah greenies were guys where they were shoot guys were taking they were handing them out to you right. i never did that stuff i never had to do that stuff but you know so i don't know what it means to have to be to do it at that level or i didn't never had to be the star you know matt was going to be the star of new york and i'm sorry there's and you guys probably know more more players than me that try to take down new york city and can't do it can't do it it's, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's too big a play. Terry, I remember it. you and I first met when you were in charge of all the, all the minor leaguers down at Port St. Lucie, and I just That's wondered right. this about you. You know, if which do you miss more, being that guy who develops unknown, you know, young guys, you're in their teens, really, or being the big league manager? Because I know the other job meant the world to you. Which do you miss more? Well. I, I got I, that's a great question, but you know what? There's nothing, nothing uh, that I've ever had been more excited about, Craig, than managing the New York Mets. I told I, I I have told so many people when I wake up, woke up every morning in New York City, I had energy because I knew I was going to face something that I had to be physically and mentally ready to prepare, and it, it made me a better person, made me a better manager, I thought. The, the good news is that Evan and I weren't doing afternoons, so we weren't the ones that were grilling you every single week. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I and like how's that. your family? Everybody's well, and uh, you doing good? Everybody's fine. Guys, guys, good to hear from you, Craig. I, I, you know, I've thought about you a lot, and I, I'm, really, I'm really glad you're doing well, and uh, keep it going. I appreciate it. I'll give you a shout on my way home talk to you offline, but I, we appreciate the time today. Thanks for coming on. You bet, guys. All right. All right. There you go. Uh, Terry Collins. Interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, he did what he thought he could do, right? Counsel them, try to get them mental health help. I never heard there's the depression so much, part. There's only so much you can do, especially you get, when you're managing you, that locker room. It's listen, 25 guys in there. Is the, yeah, that's part of it. Uh, listen, this is one of those weird things where I've lived it, a different addiction, of course. I want to be clear about this. There's nothing you can do until the person's willing to get the help himself or acknowledge he may have a problem. Now, yeah. I was unaware about Matt Harvey talking about killing himself or having that level of depression. So I didn't know that part of the story till right now. And I know Mike Puma's got a story out there now about that. Um, well, that's, I, what I, that's where I was reading those quotes yeah, earlier. I was so. unaware of that, but it, it makes it, to be honest... Like, it's easy to just bury Matt Harvey now and, like, j dump on him and the, the lost talent, the wasted opportunities, you know, being a drug addict maybe or whatever the case may be. I don't feel that way. I feel sorry for Matt. I feel sad for him that maybe he had no one he could turn to. Uh, and I can relate to that part of it or not feeling like he had anybody to turn to, to talk about things, to make him feel better and not have to drown himself in drugs like I did in gambling. And I'm going to take Terry up and I'm going to call Terry on the way home I don't even ask Matt's number anymore, but yeah, someone's got to reach out to Matt, whether it's me or someone else, and say, Matt's in a really interesting spot. Matt can make the world a better place. Matt can save a, for a baseball player from making bad decisions, right? right? Matt went from the $300 million man, he didn't make 10% of that right. in his career. Not that he didn't do well. but No, but know, for the expectations that were there, he made a fraction of it. Yeah, like I feel bad for Matt. I do. I, maybe maybe you guys don't because it's wasted town and F him. And you he know, left here it, on bad terms. I feel bad for him. It, it depends. Like, I could feel bad for him. I just don't know everything that transpired in that room and everything he was going through. 
You know, we, we don't. We have no idea. What I hate. So you I, could convince yourself to feel bad for him, and you could also convince yourself to hate him and say yeah. it's wasted talent. But all of this is bits and pieces that we're finding out about. We don't actually know what he was dealing with 10 years ago. Like I, I, Listen, it's, it's a weird, like, I hate the fact that a teammate said to Terry Collins that there was a teammate doing something wrong or untoward, whatever it was, and rather than just own his own moves, said to Terry Collins, it's not as bad as Matt Harvey. I know. I was so itching like, to find out that. who that player is, by He's the way. He's not going to tell you. And what that player did. Because also to see, like, what kind of level was it on. I hate that. Because as much as you hate it, and I understand why, and I wouldn't have that excuse, where a player could be upset is if they're being yelled at for being late. And he says, yeah, I'm late. Look what this guy's doing. Yeah. And like, you can see where that frustration comes from, even if that's not the way you'd handle it or I would yeah, handle yeah, it. Yeah, like, I'm not doing anything as bad as that guy. Bust right. that guy's balls. Right. Why are you busting my balls? Right. I, I hear you. 